Well. Yes, Bob. We had an experience of a lifetime. We sure did. And we're going to talk at length about it. We saw Batman vs. Superman. Dawn of Justice. I took notes. Really? Yep. Because I, right. I wanted to remember everything. So... <laughs> We're, let's try not to spoil it for as long as we can. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get that long. And then we'll warn everybody when we start spoiling. Yeah. All right. So what you think? I didn't like it. I, I know you didn't. Uh, I just, you know, and most of my problems with it have nothing to do so much with um, faithfulness to source material. I feel like... That's what, like when somebody says they don't like a comic book movie, most people just assume because it's not like the comics, and it's not. Oh, that's a lot of people's reason, yeah, for not liking it. But my main reasons for not liking this movie are similar to my reasons for not liking Man of Steel, and that it just doesn't work as a movie. Okay, the scenes don't really last for longer than a minute, and they just immediately jump to the next thing, and there's no cohesion between scenes. Um, it was very, like, dull for, like, 90% of the movie. Like, the action scenes weren't even all that exciting. There's not a lot of action scenes in this movie, surprisingly. And, you know, the acting just wasn't, you know, all that good in a lot of spots. I, I, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed myself. It was okay. I don't think it was bad. I don't think it's a bad movie. To me, a bad movie is one that you that's boring or that you don't that you're not interested in while you're watching it that you don't care about seeing any of the characters you don't care about what's happening next or something that pulls you right out of that world and i felt like i was in that world and i wanted to see what was going to happen next so i enjoyed myself um in terms of faithfulness to the source material, I think that this was definitely a comic book movie. And Zack Snyder, he there was parts in the movie where he's like, "Hey," and slaps you across the face like this is a f-ing comic book movie. Don't f-ing forget it. All right, <laughs> throws yeah. you back in your seat. You, there's that, but I mean, at the same time, you can't just and I appreciate that. You can't just say like this is a comic book movie. That's like a cop out answer, you know. Because if you say that, you know, then. You're using that excuse to excuse I'm like, not say- basic. I'm not saying that those are the reasons that it's weird and bad. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I actually really liked some of the ridiculous comic booky things that happened. I was like, "That's awesome." I didn't. I not in an ironic way. I, I mean, I was like, "That's cool that they did that." This will go into spoilers, but there are like are some like well, the more comic booky elements that just felt out of place with like the rest of the film they're trying to portray. Like this is a very dark movie this is a very serious right. movie and then you get into something like the really comic book elements and it just really doesn't fit See, with I, the overall world that they're building i didn't feel that no. i i i mean i could see where you're getting at but i think that it works with the world that they're building i don't th- it, it, it this is mostly a batman movie yeah and i think that if I mean, it would have been a lot better if it was just a Batman movie. Probably. Well, um, but yeah, I, I I agree that those things could take somebody out, but they didn't for me. I I because I, I knew that this that Zack Snyder is bat crazy, and I knew that stuff yeah. like that was going to happen. Um, but I mean, I mean, I just think this this goes to further prove that I don't think Zack Snyder is a good fit for the DC universe because like he doesn't, you know, get the characters. He doesn't, you know. His Superman is not Superman. Like, I'm sorry. Most like, of the problems I have with the movie are his fault. <laughs> yeah. Like, his Superman is not Superman. His Batman, while Ben Affleck is was really good in the role, like, that's not the Batman I know. That's not the Batman a lot of people know. Like, it's very clear that he had a particular vision, and it's a very distorted vision of what it's supposed to be. It's kind of like, you know... Of an angsty teenager's idea of what Batman right. and Superman should be. I went into this movie like this is not what I'm like. Well, here's the thing. I went. I went in and I was like, this is Zack Snyder's movie. Everything I know, throw it out the window. But they don't. This they assume that you know a lot about Batman already, which is Do totally they? fine. Do they? Because they start this movie again. With his origin. They do. It was very quick, and I feel like they did that out of necessity. But they don't tell you anything else. They don't tell you how he became Batman. 
why why do people why do you feel like that's necessary? Everybody knows it. Like you they know, did, Batman Begins wasn't that long ago. It was like literally two minutes. It was like really quick. The, and 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 then it got weird. But yeah. <laughs> but um they I they I mean But why waste any time with it? Right. I, th- I that was just that was just like a thing to do before the title sequence. But that's but the thing is, like, there's so much this movie is trying to convey, and there's right. so much that it's trying to tell. But, but it doesn't, thing. and it doesn't tell everything. What I'm getting why at waste is, any time with that? My point is, they assume that you know Batman already, and they throw you in without any. Th- they give you the the two minute clip, and then they turn Batman on his head at some points. Oh, they completely turn and, him and, on his head, and and like you think you they they want you to think that you know this character, and then all of a sudden you don't. And that's not okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it de- it's definitely clear that Frank Miller had that Frank. I'm sorry, that Zack Snyder <laughs> has read The Dark Knight Returns, right? And only The Dark Knight Returns, and has just taken that version of Batman over the edge. More on that when we get yeah. spoilers. Um, way more on that. Let me review my notes again because I'm all re- I'm ready to go <laughs> into spoilers. Yeah. Um, I feel like. People would have loved this movie if it came out before Batman Begins. Before all of these other comic book movies. I don't know. Like, after Batman and Robin, and yeah. before all the other comic book movies. Because... I don't know. I, I don't think time period would matter. Like, this this is this would have been a bad movie no matter when it got released. I don't think... Because that would have been right off the, the tails of two other much worse Batman movies. Yes, much worse Batman I don't know. movies. I honestly, I don't even know anymore. This because this was a good Batman movie. It had some things that, that no. were a little bit ass. Honestly, like I don't think it is. I don't. Yeah. Even, I don't think this works as a Batman movie. It doesn't work as a movie. Period. Okay. Like, like that's my. That was my biggest problem with it for ninety percent of the movie. The other ten percent is spoilers. But yeah, for ninety percent of the movie, like it just didn't work as a movie for me. Like, it why, why didn't it work? It wasn't exciting. It was disjointed. It was confusing. It was, you know, not very well acted in a lot of places. Its attempts at humor were very bad. Like, it's it felt like a robot trying to write humor for the first time. I only know one part that was an attempt at like a touchy thing, and it was terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it was like right in the beginning. Yeah. Um. I was excited for there was one particular part where I was like on the edge of my seat and I really enjoyed myself. But they also make Superman look like an idiot and he has no like his character is terrible. <laughs> he yeah. has no emotion. Though that's another thing cuz like Superman a lot of the characters in this they movie they make him a weak piece of Superman shit. in particular like their motivations and their ideas like go keep wavering back and forth. Right. Like no, nobody, like, with the exception of Wonder Woman, nobody in this movie is consistent in like I, what they do and why I they feel do like it. One, the only reason Wonder Woman is consistent, well, no, I don't want to get spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> um. But having you know, Wonder Woman was my favorite part in the movie. Every time she's on screen, I was like, "This is good. I like where they're going." Her theme has a really wicked guitar solo in it. That was another really Zack Snyder part. Oh yeah, but like I just, I just thought it was cool. <laughs> that like, all came of a sudden, out of nowhere. All of a sudden, it's like wee, 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 wee. like that. But was I was, cool. I was like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no like you know Nolan trilogy. I, but I'm not expecting. Just crumple Nolan... that up and throw it. Out I know, the window. like I'm not expecting a Nolan movie. You're not getting out. an art house piece. This is a freaking comic book movie. <sighs> like. So the Marvel movies are comic book movies too, and they're probably I know, but more they're like, faithful to comic this books movie than... is not based in reality. Neither are the Marvel it's movies. Not. Yeah, but they like they like bring you in really far. You know, they like... the Marvel movies, and I hate comparing the DC movies to the Marvel movies, but you know the Marvel movies are the gold standard, and they they, they do just enough in reality, and then like take you just to the next step. You know, everything's. It feels natural. All right, better example. I was watching a cartoon. The original Richard Donner <laughs> Superman movies, like those are completely fantasy, but right. there was just enough verisimilitude in there to make you believe everything. Verisimilitude meaning to feel real, and he had that on a sign while he was making that movie, so he would remind the cast and crew what they were aiming for. 
Yeah. I I was pulled into this story. I was into this world and I believed it. I did not think it was at all grounded in reality. I, I, I looked at it as more of a cartoon. The, the, but the thing is, because what really like like makes it seem like they're trying to ground it in reality is all the political stuff that they were trying to do. Oh, they it. tried. There was like... And by they, I mean Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder and the writers, Chris Terrio and David Goyer, which, I, by the honestly, way, they're like trying to forget that David Goyer had a hand in this. I honestly don't think that it was the writer's fault. I Some of the dialogue was ham-fisted, yeah. but I... Mo- like, I honestly don't have as much of a problem with the plot as you do. I think that that could have been fixed... I mean, not fixed, but I think they could have just portrayed it better. There, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, because there was a way to do this story and to tell this story. I think the story in itself was all right. They didn't tell think it, was, it very well. Like, it wasn't all garbage, this movie. There were parts that were really good. But there wasn't a lot. There wasn't enough for me to sit there and say, yes, this is a good movie. Like, I, right. I, there was nothing in there that made me forgive everything else. All right. You know? Well, I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed myself. The movie was just okay. It was just an okay movie. Now I'm going to tell you why it was just an okay movie. All right. Because we're going to spoilers. Everybody who hasn't seen it yet, leave. And go watch our last podcast because we also talked about, like, the critics' reaction yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that was so, a pre-show to this. A little pre-show. So go watch that if you want more. And then come back after you've seen the movie. Or just don't see it because it's not going to be good. <laughs> Or, yeah, just watch. You know what? Do you, whatever you, you want. You're your own person. Yeah. Just know that there's going to be spoilers right now. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, what didn't you like about it? <laughs> Where to start? What were we just talking about? Oh, let's talk about the big, fat elephant in the room where I was like, Will's going to love this. Batman just a murderous <laughs> rampage. Just a genocidal maniac. Let, let me just say this. <laughs> Batman has killed somebody in at least every single movie he's been in, except right. for Adam West and Batman and Robin. Right. Batman killing somebody isn't a problem for me. <laughs> my my problem is Batman killing somebody in movies isn't a problem for me. My problem is in its depiction. Mm. Michael Keaton, when he killed somebody, it was like when he was pushed over the edge. Like, he didn't start killing people until the end of Batman 89. Christian Bale, he didn't, you know, he, he only killed uh, Ra's al Ghul and Harvey, Harvey Dent out of necessity. The Ra's al Ghul that one was, was great because he, he said, like, yeah. like, like, the whole movie, he's not killing anybody. That was a major plot point. Yeah. And at the end, he's like, I don't have to save it. you. And, and you're like, whoa. Because it was the lesser of the two evils. Like, there was a reason for it. That was awesome. This movie, he does not give a single solitary flying f- Now, did you see what Zack Snyder said, his reasoning for this? What was his reasoning? It's ridiculous. He he's mentions that he's killed in all the other movies. He says that uh, there's even a counter for the Christopher Nolan movies of all of the people that he probably killed. It just either happens off screen or they blow up or something. Right. Which is true. But... He said it's just done in really ambiguous ways. So what I he said what I tried to do is I tried to make it really ambiguous so you didn't know if they died or not. But and, and I read that I read that and I'm like, okay, he failed. That, yeah. he failed as a director. Because like, <laughs> you know, Batman. He's like dragging a dude around in the car. He's dragging a dude flips him on top of another car. They both explode. All the cars that he shoots in this movie clearly explode. He's using guns. He's <laughs> using not just the guns on the Batmobile and the Batwing, but like actual guns with his bare hands. Yeah. Like he grabs dudes and uses their guns well, to the mow thing. people down. That's the thing. When he's it, he was murdering people outside in the car and stuff, and then when he gets inside, he's not killing anybody. That's more ambiguous. And then when he's inside, I was like, why isn't he just killing these people when he just murdered everybody outside? You can say it's more ambiguous, but it's pretty clear that like, like these people are dying. He says that the part where the dude's got the flamethrower. Yeah. He said that he claimed that that was ripped from the Dark Knight Returns. It is, and we'll get to that. When and we're he done. shoots him in the head in the Dark Knight Returns. He shoots him right in the face. And the people on set said, you got to have him shoot him in the face. And he's like, no, I got to have him shoot the gas tank because people are going to be pissed if I shoot him in the face. It's... <laughs> 
I don't know. That was a really weird scene in Dark Knight Returns. Like, they kind of leave it like maybe he didn't shoot him in the head. But in the Dark Knight Returns, he kills a lot of the mutants, right? He no. Like drowns one of them, doesn't he? No, he doesn't kill the leader of the mutants. Oh, he I doesn't even kill the everybody. Joker in the Dark Knight Returns. Right. And that's another thing. If this is a Batman who has no problem killing people, why is the Joker still alive in this universe? That's another thing. I don't think the Joker is. I think this is another Zack Snyder trying to fix what he screwed up. If if the next words out of your mouth is you think that he's Jason Todd. No, I'm... no, no, no. He's not Jason. I think that he killed the Joker after the Joker killed Robin. And that's why he's on a murderous rampage. I think before he kills the Joker, so you he's goody two shoes. You don't think the Joker is in Suicide Squad aside from flashbacks? No, because he's only with Harley Quinn in flashbacks in the movie, in the trailers. No, not only. Well, there's the there's only there, two that, that's scenes. That's the big scene. The big scene is yeah, him with Harley Quinn. But then you got the scenes with him wearing like in the masks and stuff, like mowing down what looks like an office building. Yeah, but I don't think Harley Quinn's in that. No, Th- there's there's um there's Harley Quinn in in the vat. Yeah, and there's Harley Quinn in, in the car in the car. Yeah, and all the other scenes, there's no other characters in there. It's just the Joker him. by himself. Yeah. yeah, so that I think it's it could be him in the past. Or it could be like he's the target for the suicide. I'm not squad. saying this is. Yeah, th- I think that's also plausible. Yeah. I'm not saying that I know what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying that that is possible. That Batman killed the Joker, and that's but why I'm just he's, saying like that's a, that's a, a ma- that's now. a major question because if the Joker is still presently alive, like why did why didn't Batman kill him if he has no problem killing all these henchmen? That would be stupid. That would be very dumb. Yeah, this is a very big misstep. <laughs> there's a lot they see that's what i'm talking about because like there are a lot of like plot questions that like don't make a lot of sense right. like um holly hunter's character senator finch the whole movie she's like uh superman has to be accountable superman is dangerous superman is a problem superman you know needs needs to answer for what he's done you know superman's a menace and then lex Luthor says you know um we might have access to kryptonite uh will you let me get access to it and she's just like Oh, I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't want to make a weapon. Like, make up your mind. It's also very unclear why Lex Luthor even wants anything to do with Superman. He he changes. They never explain. He that. changes his like answer like three times. Like it's daddy issues. Um, it's it's he has got a problem with God. God, hmm. you know, it's I, Lex Luthor might have been the worst thing about this movie. He was very bad. He he is probably the worst Lex Luthor yeah. in live action. Th- they. I don't know what he was thinking. Like, if he would have just played the dude from the social network, that would have been fine. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he tried to be the Joker, and that was weird. I don't understand why... Because they, they released the picture... The first picture of Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor they released was him bald. Then the next thing they showed him was him with his long hair. Right. And then, well, you find out at the end of this movie, he's bald because he goes to prison and they shave his head. Yeah. We did not need an origin story for his baldness. Like we accept the fact that Lex Luthor is bald, right? Well, I'm gl- I'm happy that they didn't do some stupid reason like he like he was making Zod and he zapped his hair off or something because I thought that was was, was going to happen. That's the com- that's a comic book reason. That's I know, what, that's the I, know. Why he lost I know, but that's dumb. But that's dumb. It it's it's not that much dumber than anything else that happened in this movie. <laughs> it's not dumber than the fact that he he mixed his blood with Zod and created Doomsday. That's dumb. That's that's a little dumb. Uh, that's another thing where I suspended my disbelief. I suspended my disbelief with a lot of the political stuff because I just assumed that's the government. <laughs> just flip-flopping all over the place, not knowing what's going on, being like, oh, I can't handle that. Yeah. You know, just talk to this guy. Talk to that guy. So, but things I liked, I mean, right? Things I didn't like, right in the beginning, the whole flashback. Oh, I was yeah. like, this imagery is pretty cool. I was like, yeah, that's Zack Snyder, all right, with the pearl necklace, the freaking blowback well, of the gun blowing the things off finish your thought and then uh I, I was like yeah this i've seen this a thousand times i'm a little upset i'm watching it but whatever and then it ended pretty quick but then all right at the end and he starts getting raised up by the bats i, I was said, i was like I, I had the obama face i was like i said out loud I was like oh no <laughs> i said out loud in the theater i'm like okay all right this is not <laughs> off to a good start but then it was a dream sequence and i was like all right fine what were you going to say about the... The, the whole gang? pearl necklace thing, the way he shoots Martha Wayne... I've seen that before. Yes. That's from The Dark Knight Returns. Okay. That exact image. Also, when Thomas Wayne, like, 
balls up a fist in front of Clark as a child before he's going to punch. That's all from Dark Knight Returns. The the scene where, you know, he shoots the guy and says, I believe you. That's from Dark Knight Returns. Uh, the sniper rifles from Dark Knight Returns. Uh, Clark after he gets nuked and he's like a zombie from Dark Knight Returns. There was a lot of things in this movie that the only reason they were <laughs> done that way is because that's how it was done in Dark Knight Returns. Right. There are I've seen millions of different ways. Um, I've seen the Waynes die a million different ways, but this but this had to be done the Frank Miller way. I've seen Batman have a hundred different ways of shooting a uh, tracking device, but this had to be done the Frank Miller way. Right. It's like I'm glad he did that because he can't make it up on its own on his own. Clearly, but like. <laughs> And because this is a very uh, Dark Knight Returns story, it's Batman versus Superman. Yeah, but the but the whole thing is the reason why the Dark Knight Returns was so effective is because that but Superman wasn't an asshole in it. Superman was like was like a a good like character in that. The reason why it was effective is because that was comic book Batman and Superman, and they had at that point like forty years of backstory and tension building up to that point. This had one movie right and like that's not enough to go right into something as serious serious and meaningful as dark knight returns the problem is they made they this was a batman movie and they made superman the bad guy but he like he was just like like useless you just you just like felt bad for him like the the motivations for like why they hate each other like not are not only like flimsy but they kind of like you know they're they don't matter like at, at the end like super like batman hates superman because he blames him for the destruction of metropolis okay and superman hates batman because he thinks he's going too far with his vigilantism okay fine whatever but by the time they get to the fight and they don't they don't fight until like 30 minutes before the movie ends yeah I had to pee really bad. Like, you're waiting the whole movie. Like, they barely interact with each other. Right. Like, they have two other scenes before that. And by the time they get to the fight, which isn't a good fight scene, by the way. It's very dull. It's very yeah, tedious. It's, it's, it's like, okay. You know? And, like, the, the motive... Because by then, Superman doesn't even hate Batman at this point. He just... The reason why they're fighting is because Batman's an idiot and Superman hasn't, you know... Just flat out told him, "Hey, no, Superman's the idiot. Superman could have well, Batman wasn't wouldn't like listen to him. Batman wouldn't just stop. Batman was so gung ho on his right. mission to kill Superman, right, right, right. And Superman just didn't stop to think before anything happened. He was, he didn't stop to say, Lex has my mother and is going to kill her unless I kill you. That's a superhero trope when superheroes meet for the first time. They have to fight according to all of these writers. I get that." This was not the way to do it, and what's even- I don't think there. I don't think you should ever do that. I th- I think because it's because that's always the case. It's always they're both right, but they won't talk to each other until after they fight. But there's they, that's not okay. There there are ways to do it and ways not to do it, and this was definitely a way not to do it. And the biggest problem I have with that fight is the way it's resolved with with Martha. Right. the The way it's resolved is Superman finally says, "I have to save Martha," and. Batman has a panic attack because that's Batman's mother's name. How does he know that name? They took something that is insignificant. Like that that is not a thing. That's Batman's weakness. That is a coincidence. That is a coincidence in the comics. And every fan knows that's a coincidence. I, and and it's they a coincidence talk, they, here. They no, they tried to make it this like deep, meaningful thing. That's why they're friends, because their mothers have the I, same I, name. I think that that's fine. It was depicted terribly in this movie. It was depicted They ve- ma- they made it very cheesy and corny. They didn't have to make it look like that. If 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 that's, Superman was like, I have to save my mother, Martha, and he was like, Oh, your mother's named Martha too. My mother's name is Martha, and then they become buddies. That's no, fine. that's a that's a dumb thing. <laughs> but but like they, and, but Batman was literally right about to kill him, and he they goes, were trying, Martha, and he was like, <laughs> and he like freaked out. That was bad. They were trying to turn nothing into something, and right. it didn't work. Did not work. Okay, I mean, that's a lot of movies. Or nothing is something. <laughs> well, like it, it's become especially. It's not like there's like a deep. There is no deep meaning in that. It's especially come true of like franchise movies now, especially because they try to make like, 
you know, this is more so like the Amazing Spider-Man movies and the recent Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. Everybody's connected. Everything means something. But it doesn't. Not right. everything has to mean something. Right. You know? Well, that just means that Martha was a typical name back then in like, yeah. the, <laughs> like the, what, the 40s? Yeah. Um, things I did like. Um, well, seeing the trailer, I really, really, really liked the imagery of Nightmare Batman in the in the trench coat in the desert and then you have all dark sides like dudes Parademons. that was awesome and then you see it in the movie and you're like this is a flashback <laughs> no no not a flashback. this is a dream no this sucks how can Damn you it. how can it not be a, like and then the the whole i think that was the flash but he had a visor so it kind of looked like cyborg that was the i hated that scene I love that because it was like, okay, this is the future. That's no, actually plausible. I I hated that scene for this reason because that's not how you introduce a character like the Flash. That's not how you do cameos. Basically, what he did he was just, he just he just appeared threw it in your face. And he said, "Hey, I'm the Flash. Do you get this? This is a reference to something. Ask your comic book friend sitting next to you what this means." Like it had no significance to anything. If you would have removed that, I don't even know what the hell he's saying. I, if you I, remove that from the movie, it would have had no bearing on the plot. I liked it because it struck a nerve with me because it all made sense right there. What is going to happen between him and Superman. But talking to other people who haven't seen other stories of Batman and Superman have basically how it played injustice yeah <laughs> game injustice which speaking um, of which his costume looked exactly like the costume in injustice and that costume is terrible okay <laughs> um those people had no idea what that meant yeah, and, exactly and so I, why I would you put that, that the, i love that i was like this is awesome but that's all uh, that might only be because i knew about it you knew about it right, right. but like even i knew about and it and nobody like, knew who that was i don't even i that looked like cyborg to me but it would make more sense if it was the flag yeah because that's the Flash's thing, running through dimensions. But you only right. know that if you know the Flash. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to go see this movie don't know the Flash as well as they do Batman or Superman. They'll just think it's some when weird... When they finally show the Flash, he looks Asian. Is he Asian? No, Ezra Miller is not Asian. He's just got a weird face. That's another a thing. face. That's another thing, too. <laughs> like, the way... Because the, the whole big thing is, like, there's going to be cameos from the Flash and Cyborg and Aquaman. I knew those weren't going to be big. I mean, there's a difference between not being big and being wasted. And these were wasted. This is like one of the worst ways to introduce the other superheroes in a movie. Cause like the Batman just basically sends Wonder Woman a Dropbox file with like videos of her, the flash Aquaman and cyborg. And, and it was terrible. I think, I think Batman should have been part of that little Dropbox folder. Cause yeah. nobody knows who Batman is. Well, it was supposed to be people met- think he's like, yeah, but yeah, people meta-humans. think he's like, you know, but it wouldn't be an effective Batman if he was caught on film. But there should be a file that with just a big Probably, question mark yeah. in it. <laughs> but oh my god, it was it was just so lame. Like oh, there's a uh, convenience store is about to get robbed, and the Flash is just like oh no, zoop zoop, stop that. And then yeah. you know a deep sea dive exploration. All of a sudden, hey, there's Aquaman with a trident looking like Aquaman. So what do you like? Why did you like Wonder Woman? I liked Wonder Woman because that that was how you portray Wonder Woman. She was smart. I mean, let, let's let's get this out of the way. She was like barely in the movie. Exactly. If you removed Wonder Woman from this movie, nothing would change. There would be no significant change to the overall story. But that being said, every time she was on screen, she was exactly like the Wonder Woman I know and expect. She was smart. She didn't take anybody's bullshit. She knew what she was doing. She was, you know, probably, you know, a step or two ahead of batman at least until he sends her you know the picture of her from like world war one you know and then when she arrives to help fight doomsday you know that's the warrior aspect coming out and showing showing them that like this this is serious this needs to get done stop dicking around and let's get this done right you know that's wonder woman she was probably the best portrayed character in the film I think she's only the best portrayed character because we barely saw any of her. <laughs> there wasn't enough to screw <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, they would have. They would screw that up if Probably. Zack Snyder made a whole movie out of that. Yeah, is he directing the next? No, no Patty Jenkins is. Thank okay. God. Good. Um, now there were, th- I think three jump scares. Yeah, there was the one where he was, like, 
touching Martha's casket, yeah. just so that you know his mother's name is Martha. Oh, really? So, I know. so you could yeah. figure it's a little throwback <laughs> later, um, which was dumb. You can't jump scare a movie. You get one, a movie, and it yeah. has to mean something. I don't know where the third one was, but one of them was uh, the explosion, which I loved. Which explosion? The uh, in the, Oh, in the Senate? In, yeah. I thought that scene was awesome because I because I knew something was happening and I was like, "This is gonna go down, Superman! You gotta do something." It went and dragged on a little bit, but then the tension was rising. I was like, "Superman, do something! Superman, do something! Superman, do something!" And he doesn't do anything because he sucks in this movie. <laughs> and then everything blew up, and I was like, "They freaking went there again!" Because earlier there was everything got nine eleven in the beginning of the movie, yeah, and that was also awesome. I enjoyed myself then. That scene. I, I was reminded that that scene, the turning point in that scene, is when Holly Hunter looks at a jar that could be pee. Right. I didn't one think that the, was pee. But one of the most important scenes in that movie centered around whether or not Holly Hunter was looking at pee. Did she drink out of it? No. Oh, okay. she just, I thought she drank out she of it. She just like started getting really scared that there was pee on her desk. Well, that's what, when she looked at that, I was like, oh. And then she looked at that, and then she looked at... Lex's chair and he wasn't there and I was like yo that dude's gonna blow up <laughs> apparently people didn't put that together I, I, that I assumed obvious. that like I assumed that he was uh, gonna be a that guy in the wheelchair was gonna be a suicide bomber like when he was spray painting false god on the statue right. I thought he was had a bomb on his vest but yeah no that's <sighs> I, I I like that part again it was very dark it was just reminding you again that it was just reminding you again that there around. there is no f- fun in this world no. there's no fun like there's no nope. which sucks because even the that that doesn't make for a good superman movie yeah even like the nolan batman movies which are very dark and very like depressing at times they're pretty fun the the action was exciting you know there was the dialogue between alfred and bruce in dark knight is some of the most underrated stuff in that movie because it was you know lighthearted and they understood each other and they respected each other and they were, had fun with each other right you know and there was just none of that here like there was like I think the the two well three scenes that like made me laugh was like Alfred aside saying, um, you need to stop drinking wine. I'd like there to be a wine cellar for the next generation of Waynes. Alfred, what the hell are you thinking that there's gonna be a next generation of Waynes? That was funny. When Batman saves Martha Kent and he's like, I'm a friend of your son. Sorry. I'm a friend of your son. And he, she goes, Oh, I figured. You need the cape. Like that was funny. And then when Lex Luthor is is experimenting on General Zod, and General Zod is naked. I'm laughing because I'm just imagining Jesse Eisenberg staring at Michael Shannon's wiener. Yep. I liked when he crash lands the ship next to uh, Doomsday, and Doomsday looks at him and he goes, ah, ah, sh-. That was fun. That was like the which only is, time that I actually laughed. Which is another thing, because, you know, the whole destruction of Metropolis was a very big deal in the last movie. Right. And in this movie... You know, they showed it again, but it was to prove a point, you know, that all this destruction was, you know, had consequences. And that was a big theme in this movie, right. you know, that they kept saying, like, his destruction is going to have consequences. By the end of this movie, the fight with Doomsday, they do the exact same thing. The only difference is they like to remind you that the island they're fighting on is uninhabited. Yeah, they bring it up a lot. They bring it up a and lot. And they bring it up in very dumb ways. They could have done that a just lot better. To, just to assure you, it's okay. There's no collateral damage. It's just buildings falling. I think it was the LexCorp building. They, they Doomsday was on it, and they said, uh, good thing everybody's left for the day. The building is basically empty. Yeah. They could have just had a scene where inside the LexCorp building, they said, we have to evacuate. Yeah. And then that's it. Then later on, when you see Doomsday on the building, you're like, okay, nobody's in there. Yeah. And you don't have to be like, they don't have to shove it down your freaking throat. And it all, it was also weird when Batman was like, I got to get the Lance. I got to get him to chase me to Gotham. I'm like, what? You're going to bring him to Gotham? Yeah. Just leave him. I mean, granted, he didn't end up killing everybody that's, in Gotham. That's another thing, too, because like, just go get the Lance Lo- and bring Lois, it back to Lois him. Lane throws the Lance. Into like the water, and then she runs away, and then nobody tells her that they need to get the lance. She just goes back to get the lance. Like, yeah. what made her decide to change her mind? Well, at that, at that point, she saw Doomsday, and she was like, 
oh, I guess we need that lance. But what made her think that that would work on Doomsday? How did she know he was Kryptonian? She, she, yeah, she probably didn't know that he was Zod. Yeah. There, there's like so many things like that. Like, how did Lex Luthor... Lex, yeah, Lex Luthor. I almost said Lex Luger, who was a wrestler. How did <laughs> Lex Luthor know that Clark Kent is Superman? At what point did that revelation happen? I mean... <laughs> maybe he just looked at Clark. <laughs> I feel like if you know Clark, kind of know. That's another thing. Like in the beginning of the movie, when you see Clark Kent, like in the apartment, you're like, "How does anybody in this world, like, think that that's not?" <laughs> I will say, did you see the video of Henry Cavill in New York and nobody recognizes him? No, Even but I've heard about it. He's wearing a Superman shirt. He's standing underneath the billboard for Batman vs Superman. And people just walk by him. Wow! Like nobody recognized him. <laughs> that's. I mean, I'll I'll give credit where credit is due. Thank you for finally showing people that that works. <laughs> <sighs> yep. So, I feel like we we need to discuss the big elephant in the room. I thought we did already. I'm talking about the end. What about it? What the fight between Superman and Doomsday? Okay. And the aftermath of that. Okay, he's dead. He's he died. Yes. Death of Superman. Here, the entire movie, I w- I wasn't. I was just like uh, sad, like I was. Uh, like I was. Like I was disappointed. Yeah. I was sad that like a movie that I thought I wanted to see, I thought they would have like good ideas, just wasn't working. It was dull. It was boring. It wasn't exciting. It was over serious. It had all these other like basic filmmaking problems, and I just wasn't into it. Then they kill Superman. Like Doomsday and Superman kill each other. And I had zero emotion because I hated Superman the whole movie. And then they do, they spend the next 10 minutes of the movie, probably more, at basically doing Superman's funeral. It's like, basically, this movie is like you read The Dark Knight Returns, the whole thing. And then when you get to the end, when Batman says to Superman, I want you to remember the one man who beat you, you stop reading that book. And then you go read the last chapter of the death of Superman. Like that's exactly what happened. Right. And that's when I, I stopped being sad and I got pissed off. (laughs) Like what the hell was that? Hmm. Like what made you think that was a good idea? The death of Superman is supposed to be, like, regardless of what you think of the original story, because there are people who don't think the original Death of Superman story is good, which is fair. But regardless of what you think of that story, that is supposed to be one of the most important, shocking, and event-changing incidents in the DC universe. You don't just shoehorn that into the end of the movie because you think that's what needs to happen or because right. that's the only Superman story you've read or because, you know, you think that will be the, a good catalyst for the Justice League. That's not. With a world without Superman forming the Justice League, it's a very different Justice League than what it's supposed to be. You're basically getting all these heroes together for protecting themselves and for revenge. You're not getting them together for any altruistic need. Again, I think that could have been okay if it was depicted better. The fight with Doomsday could have been a bigger epic thing. Hit him going to Lois at the end, being like, I love you, and then like going to die, <laughs> that was dumb. But like if that was like a big deal, then that could have been cool. Yeah, but nothing in this movie everything in this movie acted like it was a big deal, but nothing was. Right. Like nothing was the a big deal. The only thing that was a big deal to me. Was the future Flash coming back? I was like, hell yeah. 9-11 in the beginning. Everything being 9-11. Yeah. That was cool. And uh, what was it? The Suicide Bomber. Yeah. I was like, those were all, those are the three things that I was like, these are awesome. These are big deals. Everything else was just, you know. I mean, in a better movie, those probably would have And none of those were action sequences. I mean, in the, every, was in the no, beginning, that was no maybe action There were no action sequences sequence. in this movie. Like, you think about it. You had... The nightmare scene. You had a car chase. And then like you have the, the final fights. Like that's it. I'm not I'm not saying I want more action. You know, I want I but would have would, much rather have had you know a, like a better depiction of the plot. You would think like a comic book movie like has 
you know, a lot of good action scenes, and this didn't really have any. Right. And the ones that were there weren't good. Right. I think in all, like, I was totally willing to put aside the fact that Batman was killing people. I was like, this is dumb, but fine, whatever. This is a very brutal Batman. He's more like the ba- Punisher. Why does Batman brand people? That was, yeah, that was weird. Like who? This is a very brutal Batman. And I was like, fine, whatever. But when Zack Snyder said that he was trying to make the kills ambiguous, I was like, then you then you, you failed, failed miserably. That, then you did not do what you wanted to do. And that makes you a bad director. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, I thought this movie was okay. And you thought it was garbage. I, I, I think there were parts that you can take and make a good movie with them. Well, yeah. I mean, you can say that about a lot of movies, but know. you know, it just it wasn't here. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't like saying like that movie was complete trash. If it wasn't complete trash, I'm not going to say that. You know. You know, and like like I said, ninety percent of the movie for me was it was just like I was sad. Like I, I like, and then the last ten percent was like I would say like it was garbage. Right. So like I I'm very mixed. The last ten percent I had to pee really bad. Me too. It went actually. on for a half an hour, a little too long. Yeah, like that funeral Wanted scene did not get end. the hell out of there. That did not end. <laughs> no, and, and then, especially the last shot on the casket, I was like, I gotta pee. <laughs> that my and I, like one grain I was, raises. I was talking to my co uh, coworker about this, and I told him that scene, and he said. So basically, this movie ended the same way the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen movie ended. <laughs> I, didn't, I haven't seen that. You saw it. We saw it together. League like, of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Yeah. Like, oh, God. Like a million years ago. Yeah, a million ago. years ago. But yeah, no, oh. it's the same thing. Sean Connery dies. And they're like, you know, it's his funeral. And they walk away. Then all of a sudden, like, the ground starts shaking and lightning happens. And the dirt starts doing this. Same thing. I do not remember The only that. difference is they cut the dirt shaking down to a frame in Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. Which is like literally one grain. Yeah. All right. One last thing to get you really mad. Okay. In the beginning of the movie, when they're in the desert in Africa, yeah. which should have just been the Middle East, like stop being a pussy. <laughs> just make it just make it like, you know, like a real war. That's a thing now. They 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 like make they, they make terrorists they like black around. and in Africa. And yeah. like all these just like what the hell? Why are you why are all the terrorists always black? Yeah. It's like so dumb. Anyway, like, as if that's not offensive. That's super offensive. It's probably more right. offensive. So, well, maybe Zack Snyder had a little bit too much of Frank Miller. Yeah. So, anyway, they're in the desert. Lois Lane's there. And he's she's with that uh, other dude who's taking pictures. And he works for the CIA. Yeah. Apparently, the credit for him he's is Jimmy. Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, I know that. That is dumb. I, I f- And I thought there was a girl who was, like, Jane Olsen or Jenny. something. Jenny That Olsen. girl, Jenny. Yeah. yeah. I'm... I am rejecting that it is Jimmy Olsen because they don't say his name in the movie. So I'm right. rejecting that it is Jimmy Olsen and I am accepting as my headcanon that Jenny is Jenny Olsen. When I saw him in the in the movie, I was like, oh, that's Jimmy. That's, yeah, that's 100% me Jimmy too. Olsen. Like, and then oh, he's oh, like, oh, I'm oh, a CIA. Jimmy. And I'm like, oh, it's not Jimmy. It's not Jimmy. And apparently it is. <laughs> he's, he's like, here's this dude that you know already. Just like all these other characters yeah. you know already. But he's nothing like you know. But he's you know. nothing like you know, and I'm going to blow his brains out right now. That's a metaphor for what he thinks of your characters. <laughs> he's like, this is one that you love? Boom! Right in I the think, face. I think the biggest problem as a whole, because Zack Snyder has like just kept saying like he's a comic book guy. I know the comic books. This is Apparently this is, not. That's the thing. <laughs> he clearly doesn't. He has maybe read like two or three comics in his life. All of them happen to be done by Frank Miller. One of them is Watchmen. Frank Miller is like, you know, like, Frank, he's like, all right. <laughs> Frank Miller. <laughs> he's made some good stuff. Frank Miller was a, a great writer, but he's not anymore. Right. And I, people who, people need to stop clean. As great as Dark Knight Returns is, people need to move on from it. Like it, it, it's, it hasn't aged well in a lot of places, and there have just become since then better Batman stories. Even Frank Miller's own Batman Year One, like surpasses Dark Knight Returns. So they just need to move on from that one book and understand that there's seventy-seven years of Batman 
to take from and encompass. You have two videos. You have one that says... Uh, Dark Knight Returns is overrated. Yes. Mm-hmm. But one that really spoke to me <laughs> was Zack Snyder as a 90s comic book was yeah. artist. Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought that the whole movie. I was like, this is just a 90s like oh, my comic God. book yeah. story. And I that's why I enjoyed myself. Because I looked at it as a just a bad shit crazy 90s comic book but there's story. good bad shit crazy and there's bad bad shit crazy you got like you know your jim, well, jim is amazing and this definitely wasn't that you get your jim lee's and your todd mcfarlane's and uh, which are good and then you have your rob liefeld's which are bad right. Zack snyder falls more to the <laughs> rob liefeld category no well like if i read this in comic form i would have i would have felt the same way i would be like okay this is okay you know I've, no, because I feel like if this was in comic form, it would have been put out by DC, <laughs> and it would, and it, you know, they would have fixed a lot of the. That's what the, I mean. The unfaithfulness yeah. of it, and, and I mean, I you, mean you you add a little bit in your head. Like, things still, that are corny, you can fix. It in your still head. would have been disjointed and like messed up, but now, I don't like. I don't know. I I watched it with. I, I went in a little bit blind. I threw everything I knew out the window and I put that filter of this is a nineties weird, colorful, yeah, dumb movie. You I, know? And, I mean, and with that in mind, I enjoyed myself. It's not an art house piece like the Dark Knight trilogy is. It's not a good film. Yeah. But it's it's a it's an okay comic book movie. And I know because I went with people who I'm like I was sitting next to our good buddy Phil who's been on the show and he loved the movie. He really did. Like this was like thing. This was stuff he's been waiting. I to see liked for it years. more last night when after I saw it than I do right now. Yeah. I have to think about it for. A while. I will say I do like Man of Steel a lot more now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it because of how bad you see it could be? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty okay. much. Like you know, I don't know what it was that there was like. At least there was like a main idea in Man of Steel. This they were they. This is the worst example of trying to do a hundred things at once. Man of Steel, I walked out of and I said that was good. And everybody was like, oh, you crazy? And like jumped down my throat. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I, it's an okay movie. I don't know. I don't know. I just, after, I don't think it was after this, bad. like, I'm there not, were bad I'm not looking forward to Justice League. And honestly, I don't, with, with the exception of Wonder Woman, I don't think I'm looking forward to anything else in the DC I can't believe they want to even do a Justice League. I can't believe they even want to do that. Well, of course they want to do it, but they're doing, but it's going to come out next year. Yeah, but like look at how poorly this one just did and man of steel did it's you know? not gonna matter because like this is already like breaking records you know and i'm honestly okay with the world that they built i'm okay with the world that they built i, I i'm not okay with uh how Zack snyder depicted m- most of that world i don't think this world is salvageable like if you get somebody else to direct justice league i don't don't know if they'll be able to do a better job. Well, well, look at what happens with Batman killing people. Apparently, he didn't kill anybody in this movie, according to Zack Snyder. <laughs> so, like, the next era, if they get somebody else to do it, Batman could be the Batman that we know. Yeah. You know? Like, it's that simple. Yeah. Like, again, I don't think it was the writer's fault for, for a lot of the problems with this movie. I think... Well, because... That some of the dialogue was weird, but like yeah. that's also on the actors to to make it more like the character. I think because uh, Joel Schumacher, while he was apologizing for Batman and Robin, he said, you know, he took full responsibility for that movie because, according to him, at the end of the day, the blame falls on the director. Right. And I yeah. don't think that's fair. Because there's so much that goes into a movie, but right. I, but I understand why he would do that. Yeah, because the director theoretically is supposed to be the leader, and that movie probably was all his fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he didn't say no to the demands of like it being more Toyotic and campy and right, stuff. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So that's what we think about Batman vs Superman. Very, very emotional. Very emotional time, yeah. I'd say. This is a you know an event of 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 our lives. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you don't see this movie. If if you want to see it, by all means. I'm just telling you I did not enjoy myself. Well, we already spoiled it for you. So yeah. if, if you don't want to see an okay movie or a bad movie, an okay borderline bad movie, 
then don't see it. But yeah. if if you you know if you're very curious, go ahead and see it. And, and judge for yourself. Don't go for other people's opinions because it's all over the board for this movie. Yeah, I might still go see it again just to you know. You're probably gonna hate it more if you do. Maybe, but you know, I won't know until. Uh, I want to ask you about your attire. What do you got there, right here? Oh, this is just a shirt, uh, you know, showing my support for the console gaming master race. Oh yeah, yeah, a shirt that you can get on T Public at our store on T Public. And now you can annotate the T Public store. Boom! It's on his chest. Look at that. Now you can click there to get that shirt, and it might be on sale. Yep. So get it. It's got all the console controls on it. Also, I want to talk about you were just f-ing all over this movie. You're wearing a, a hat about it. Yeah. Um, Why are you wearing that hat? Well, for some reason, Warner Brothers sent me a whole bunch of Batman for Superman swag. For some reason, meaning we're a lonely old YouTube channel. Why would they ever send us anything? No, like I'm serious. Like th- they send Greg Miller this stuff. Why would they send I know. us this I was stuff? like, wow, we got the same thing he got. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's because they like you, and you talk a lot about DC stuff. I guess. I mean, I mean, yeah. I may have just said bad things about this movie, but I only because I love Batman. And, and they Superman sent and him Wonder some Woman. pretty damn cool yeah, stuff. I, and he did an unboxing. I did. You can check that out. You'll put an annotation. Yeah, I'll put Somewhere. an annotation if it's not up yet, and just wait a day or something. Yeah. So anyway, that's it, right? Yeah, I'm done. Thank you for sticking it out for this long. Yeah. And we'll see you in another video. Yep. Bye, bye. Bye. Let us know what you thought about Ben vs. Superman in the comments yeah. below. And talk to each other and subscribe and all that garbage. Mm-hmm.